In the first three lessons of this unit, we discussed how each of the transformations, translations, reflections, and rotations, are all rigid motions. Rigid motions mean that when we transform these figures, the lengths, angles, and shape of the figures don't change at all. In this lesson, we'll look at how this idea of rigid motions is related to congruence. Do you remember what the word congruent means? When two figures are congruent, we say they have the same measurements, the same lengths of sides, and the same angles. And they're the same shape too. Like in this example here, we would say that these two figures are congruent to each other. When we've been transforming figures in the coordinate plane by translating, reflecting, and rotating, we've moved figures around, but we've never changed their shape or their measurements. That's why we've called these transformations rigid motions. For example, look at this translated figure. Here, our pre-image in blue, and here, our image in red. We notice that when it's been translated, it hasn't changed other than its position. It was translated to the right and down. But we can see that it has the same measurements of lengths, the same angles, and it's in the same shape. And so we would say, that this here in blue, the pre-image, and this here in red, the image, are congruent to each other. What I want you to recognize is that when we translate, reflect, and rotate figures, we're doing congruence transformations, which is the same thing as rigid motions. We say they are congruence transformations because the pre-image and the image, the two figures, are congruent to each other, no matter how we transform them, translation, reflection, and rotation. All right, here we're going to identify any congruent figures in the coordinate plane that we see here. And we'll describe the rigid motion that maps the first figure onto the second. Okay, so we want to first start identifying which figures are congruent to each other. What do you see here? Which figures are congruent to each other? Well, we can start eliminating, like, so we know these two aren't congruent to each other because they're not the same shape. Okay? And actually the same thing here. Right? These, these two triangles are both triangles, but they're not the same shape or same type of triangle. Um, and so what we see is that these two triangles are congruent to each other. Same thing with these two and with these two. Um, but then we want to identify um, the rigid motion or transformation that maps this first figure onto the other figure. So we can identify that triangle DEF is congruent to triangle a, B, C. Okay, remember that's these two right here. So we identified that they're congruent. Remember we use this, um, this symbol for congruence. So this triangle is congruent to this triangle. Well what rigid motion maps uh, one of the figures onto the other? Well we can see that with this triangle here, A, B, C, hey, is it being translated? Is it moving side to side or up and down? Well no, because it's completely changing what direction it's going. Hey, is it being reflected? Okay. Does it look like this is just a mere reflection of it? No, but it does look like it's been turned, right? Because like I see here that this corner has kind of been turned over here. So what transformation is that? That's rotation. So this is a 90 degree rotation of triangle ABC to triangle DEF. How did it know it was 90 degrees? Well, you can, uh, you know, if you don't have your protractor, which I imagine you don't, um, we're, we've only rotated 90, 180, and 270. Um, and so you just need to know in general that if I go about this much, that's 90 degrees. If I go about this much, that's 180. And if I go about this much, that's 270. Okay? Those aren't super accurate, but you get the idea. So this is how we rotated from here to here, and that's how we get those figures. And so that is able to tell us that those are congruent to each other because we can take this figure and rotate it on top of that figure. All right, so what else do we see? Well, we have these two triangles down here as well. So triangle KLM is congruent to triangle STU. 
okay, those two triangles are congruent to each other uh, on that coordinate plane. Um, well, how, uh, what rigid motion helps us determine that congruence? Well, if we look at them, they're kind of mirror images of each other. Well, what transformation uses mirror images? Reflection. So we can identify that triangle KLM is a reflection of triangle STU over the y-axis. So we can see that this triangle here, KLM, is being flipped or reflected across the y-axis right here to triangle STU. And because they're reflections of each other, they would be congruent to each other. All right, last one, these rectangles right here. Rectangle GHIJ is congruent to rectangle NPQ. R okay, we know they're congruent we can identify that they're congruent to each other and what uh, transformation is helping us identify that congruence well we can see that the triangle IHGJ is just being moved down or translated down right it's not changing orientation or anything it's not being flipped over anything um, like definitely not flipped over the y-axis um, and so it's just being translated down um, to uh, PQRN. And so we would say that rectangle GHIJ is translated six units. down, six units down, to rectangle NPQR. Let's zoom out again on that. So we notice those rectangles are just being moved. And because they're just being, tra they're just translations of each other, uh, then we can identify that they're congruent to each other. So again, what we're doing here is just identifying which figures are congruent to each other and our transformations are helping us do that because if, uh, like in this last example, if this rectangle is just a translation of this rectangle, if they're just translations of each other, then they must be congruent to each other because that's the definition that we just looked at the beginning. Two figures are congruent if they are rigid motions of each other. In this case, translations, reflections, or rotations. So, uh, if you need to pause the video and to get all this information, uh, do that. Um, but make sure you have all of this written down and are thinking about, um, you know, how do I identify uh, which of these, uh, how, how these things are being transformed and which figures are congruent. All right, so let's look at number two and three uh, to work with these congruence transformations a little bit more. Um, so I can see in this, uh, this graph here that I have two figures, and then they're congruent to each other. And number two is asking us to describe the congruence transformation that maps this quadrilateral onto this quadrilateral. So what transformation is occurring for this figure to go from here to here? Well, you, you, we only have three that we're working with, translation, reflection, rotation. I and mean, so you want to ask yourself, hey, is it being moved side to side, up and down at all? Um, is it being flipped um, in any way, or is it being rotated in any way? And there may be multiple occurring. Okay? I know for sure that it's moved to the side and down, so there's probably some sort of translation going on here. And I can also identify that you know C and A are kind of the elongated, uh, it's kind of stretched towards C and A, um, and they're going this way, okay? or kind of like this way. And it's elongated in those directions. But if I look down here, it's elongated this way to G and E. Um, and so they're not going in the same direction. So that means there's been some sort of flip. Okay? Um, it's been uh, not necessarily turned, but it's been flipped or mirrored um, in some way. Instead of going this way, it's now going that way. 
okay? Or maybe going this way, depending on uh, which points C and A relate to down here. Um, so there are a couple different ways of looking at this, and we'll look at that in two and three. Um, first, what we might notice is that if we flip this whole figure over here, if we flip it across the y-axis, okay, it would look like this. If we reflect across the y-axis, it would look like this. And so we can identify that that is one way to move it as the first way it's moved. We reflect quadrilateral ABCD across the y-axis. And when I do that, I get this figure right here. Now how do we go from this figure down to here? Well that's just a simple translation. We can see how it's matching up. Okay, everything's matching up. It's just a simple translation down. Um, and so that's the second transformation. We then translate down four units. And so I'm trying to visualize and understand how did this figure get from here to here. Okay? Well I can see that if I flip it across it looks like this and then if I just move it down, I get to that figure. Okay? And I can kind of match up the points. Okay? And so you'll want to understand how to do these transformations um, in order to figure out wh how, what happened, okay? what transformations are occurring here. But if you read number three, it says describe another congruence transformation. Um, and so there may be multiple ways of one figure uh, transforming uh, to be another figure. Um, and so if we look at this again, This figure we know is moved side and down, okay? but it has to change direction, has to flip in some way. Um, and so instead of reflecting this way, okay, we could move down, or we could reflect over and then move over. Okay? Reflect over the x-axis and then translate this way. Because if I reflect it would look like this. Okay, if I reflect down this way over the x-axis, it would look like this, and then I just have to translate off to the side. And so sometimes you might have to play around with it a little bit to determine, okay, if I reflect, what does that look like? Um, if I rotate, how's that going to work? Um, or you can just start to visualize it, which is, as I said multiple times, we want to start kind of increasing your ability to visualize um, these figures and how they move. Um, so the first thing you could do Another way of approaching this is to reflect it across the x-axis. Okay. That's what we did first here. We reflect it across the x-axis, and then we translate it to the left. Translate left. Why did I spell left that way? I don't know. five units. So two different ways of looking at this. It can either reflect across the y-axis and then translate down, or it can reflect across the x-axis and translate across. How do you know that? Again, you might have to play around with it. You might have to look at it from a couple different perspectives. Okay? Um, so is this being translated? Is it moving side to side up and down? Is it being reflected? Do I see it flipping in some way? Or is it being rotated? Do I see it being turned? Um, in some way. And if you need to, you can use your rules, right? If I know, if I know, uh, you know, this point here at C is at 4, 3, okay, 4, 3, okay, well, is there some sort of reflected or translate, what would that point look like if it was reflected? Okay, where would that point be if it was reflected across the y-axis? Or where would that be if it was reflected across the x-axis? Okay, use your rules um, to figure that out, and then how much am I going to have to translate to get from here to here? Okay. Um, so you got to really understand your transformations really well um, and understand your rules and how to use them for the coordinate points.